Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel SS Analysis. First of all, I would like to tell you that if you are watching this video first time, subscribe my channel to see my more upcoming videos on analysis of different commodities and equity indices. And second important thing is to watch this video till its end to understand this thoroughly to take your decision. Your one like will motivate me to be regular in walking more hard for you. Let us start the day to analyze the movements of ascent fervented futures. How the ascent fervented futures behave in a monthly time frame. You can see a monthly chart of ascent fervented futures. First of all, I would like to tell you that the US economy ended its longer expansion in the history in February and entered in a recession as a result of coronavirus pandemic, the private company research group that acts as arbiter for determining U.S. business cycles said on June 8, 2020. Secondly, the business cycle dating committee of the National Bureau of Economic Research said in a statement its members concluded that the unprecedented magnitude of the decline in employment and production and its broad reach across to the entire economy warrants the designation of this episode of a recession even if it turns out to be briefer than earlier contractions. And thirdly, Federal Reserve has kept the interest rate near zero throughout the 2022. So GDP will contract by 6.5% this year according to Fed. And finally, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development revised its uh, forecast for the damage the coronavirus pandemic is likely to do to the global economy. The economic updates are dire everywhere. The OECD said global growth will contract by 7.6% in 2020, assuming there is a second wave of COVID-19 infection. If a second wave is avoided, there would still be a drop of 6% this year. These figures suggest that more than twice the devastation to the global economy than its previous forecast reached in early March before the full extinction of the crisis became apparent. And here one important thing is to be noticed that uh, on Saturday, a Beijing district put itself on a wartime footing in the capital band tourism and sports event on Saturday after a cluster of novel coronavirus infection centered around a major wholesale market which sparked fears of a new wave of COVID-19 where 45 new cases were found out of 517 cases were tested. So therefore, I mean these circumstances here you can see that how the s and 500 futures closed Friday in a monthly time frame here you can see the formation of an exhaustive candle in a monthly time frame during the month of June suggests that we are going to see a sharp sell off from these level, here I find that if the S&P 500 futures take a sustainable move below the levels of 2982, we will see the S&P 500 futures to move downward up to the levels of 2789, where we will see the S&P 500 futures may find some reversal from the levels of 2789. But in case the S&P 500 futures break this second resistance, we will see the S&P 500 futures to test the next resistance level at the upper end of Ichimoku. Cloud. So, friends, here I find that the S and P 500 futures may find a rebound from these levels, from the levels of 2538. We'll see the S and P 500 futures to take a sharp upward move once again back up to the levels of 2929. In case of a rebound, we'll see the S and P 500 futures will find it very difficult to cross this immediate resistance of 2982. So here I find that the S and P 500 futures will have to go through a very volatile sessions during the month of June. And finally, I find that if the coronavirus pandemic remains without a successful vaccine or a successful biological cure during the second wave of coronavirus, we will see the S&P 500 futures will see a sharp sell off from these levels where we will see the S&P 500 futures may breach the previous lows of March 23rd when the S&P 500 futures tested the lows of 2173 where I find that a system move below these levels will push the S&P 500 futures to take a final support at these levels at the lows of 1567 where the S&P 500 futures have a 
strong support level, this level provides a long term support to S&P 500 futures because during the past two market crashes, here you can see that during the dot com bubble, the S&P 500 futures tested these highs at the levels of 1570 when they tried to break this eminent resistance in March 2000 and once again the S&P 500 futures tried to break this immediate resistance during the month of September 2000 but they could not and finally the S&P 500 futures crashed during this period and tested the lows of 775 and finally after a sustained move the S&P 500 futures started an uptrend voyage from October 2002 and continued this uptrend rally back up to these levels when the S&P 500 futures tested these highs once again in February 2007 but here you can see that the S&P 500 futures made constant attempts to break this eminent resistance at the levels of 1570 but they could not and finally the second crash occurred in October 2007 when the S&P 500 futures moved downward with a steep downward move up to the levels of 669 in March 2009. Here you can see that after sustaining here at the levels of 741, the S&P 500 futures once again started to move upward and continued this rally up to March 2013 when they finally breached this eminent resistance and moved upward and continued this uptrend above this uh, stiff resistance level and here you can see that this uptrend rally continued till January 2018 when the Tariff Trade War tussle started between the US and the China the S&P 500 futures witnessed some sell-off from these levels but successfully found some support at the levels of 2543 during the month of February 2018 and started to move upward but once again finally when this tariff trade war tussle turned into a tariff war in the month of September 2018 the S&P 500 futures showed a nose dive move in October 2018 and finally moved downward and tested the lows of 2317 in December 2018, once again we witnessed some reversal during the month of December 2018 and the next candle was formed during the month of January 2019 was very bullish and this uptrend rally once again continued when the S&P 500 futures tested the highs of 3406 in February 2020 but once again after reaching here the S&P 500 futures found heavy sell off from these levels and here you can see that this sell off continued during the month of February but here I would like to tell you that during the month of January 2020 the S&P 500 futures had already given a signal when they formed an exhaustive candle here here you can see that one exhaustive candle was formed during the month of January 2020 but the sentiments were too bullish that the investors ignored this exhaustive candle and continued to test new highs during the month of February but from here you can see the S&P 500 futures witness heavy sell off from these highs and which continued during the month of February and tested the lows of 2841 during the month of February but once again during the month of March 2020 the S&P 500 futures tried to move upward and tested the highs of 3128 you can see that the S&P 500 futures found a stiff resistance at these levels and finally witnessed a downward move which continued during the month of March when the S&P 500 futures tested the lows of 2168 on March 23rd so here you can see that during this fall the S&P 500 futures breached this strong support level at the upper end of Ichimoku cloud and tested the lower end of Ichimoku cloud and even moved more lower than the lower end of Ichimoku cloud but here you can see that the reversal was very strong and finally the S&P 500 futures closed in March at the levels of 2560 and once again during the month of April, the S&P 500 futures tried to breach this immediate resistance at the levels of 2982 but could not 
but this attempt was very good because uh, ascent federated futures tested the lows of uh, 2440 during the month of april and during the month of may here you can see that the third candle was formed in the monthly time frame during the month of may was much higher than these previous two candles and tested the highs of 3034 where we have seen the ascent federated futures close this friday here I find that after testing the highs of 3226 during the month of June, the simplified futures have already seen a heavy sell-off during this month, which has resulted in formation of this exhaustive candle. Therefore, I find that any sustainable move below the levels of 2982 during the upcoming week will result in a sharp sell-off which may continue to push the ascent Fahrenheit futures below the Ichimoku cloud once again and final support will be found during a steep fall at these levels where the ascent Fahrenheit futures will find a strong support at these levels so thank you friends thanks for watching this video if you like this video don't forget to share this video with your more and more friends thank you